Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to dive into spotting. This is not only one of the features that makes Combat Mission very different to a lot of other games, but it's a feature that drives a lot of the gameplay. So what we're going to do is take a look at what spotting is, how it works, or as much as we know about how it works, the idea of relative spotting, and finally, how to work with the spotting system in-game, how to maximize your chances of spotting the enemy and minimize your chances of getting spotted at the same time. And as always, although we're going to be doing this video in Shock Force 2, this is an engine mechanic, so it will work the same way across all the combat mission titles. I should also point out that I'm using Bin's unit icons in this video instead of the vanilla ones. These are almost the same, but there are a few differences. So if what I'm showing here looks different from what you see when you play the game, that's probably why. I would highly recommend Vin's units icons because they make differentiating different types of contacts and units much easier. I'll leave a link to the mod down in the description. The easiest way to explain what spotting is and how it works is to show it in action. So what we have here is a US Marine forward observer team on top of a building looking out over a chunk of terrain where there are three Syrian platoons at different distances. If we press go, then the first thing we see is nothing. At about the five second mark, the Marines are starting to make some spots. In the valley bottom, they have spotted a Syrian soldier with an RPG. This is a solid contact. We've positively identified this target. So it has a full color icon overhead. We can direct target it if we want to. And the TAC AI for the Marines has the option to engage it if it decides that's what it wants to do. But we've only spotted a single soldier down there where there's actually an entire platoon. Spotting is done on a pixel truppen by pixel truppen and vehicle by vehicle basis and the marines will have to spot the other soldiers down there before they can get drawn in for us. We know there's some kind of enemy infantry unit down there right now but we don't have any more details than that. In the distance we've got some grey icons. These are partial spots. In the village on the left we have two unconfirmed armoured vehicles and over on the right we have a partial spot on some enemy infantry. We just have the grey contact icons for these because although the marines have spotted something they don't have enough information to confirm exactly what or exactly where it is yet. So as well as having to spot everything individually enemy units also have to be identified before they'll show up on the map. We're still at the five second mark here so if we let the turn play on the marines will continue to observe and spot. Soon we've spotted another Syrian soldier and gotten a contact icon in close, so the marines are starting to pick up on the rest of that platoon. In the village, one of the vehicle spots has been identified as a BMP-1, and the marines have spotted some soldiers, but they haven't gotten anything else on the hill on the right. As the turn runs, the marines are picking up more contacts and working out what they are, so our picture of what's in front of us is developing, but it's patchy. By the end of the minute, we can see eight Syrian pixel truppen in the closest platoon, and this makes sense. They're only a couple of hundred meters away and they're hanging around in the open. We haven't seen all of them because Combat Mission assumes that all of the pixel truppen want to live and will be making use of micro terrain, personal camouflage, foliage, and the like in order to make themselves harder to spot. Up in the village, we've spotted all three BMPs, which again makes sense because they're pretty large noisy vehicles, but we've only spotted a few Syrian pixel trevlin, the soldiers kneeling behind this wall. The other soldiers in the buildings are much harder to spot, obviously because they're inside in the shadows peeking out through the windows. Finally, we don't have a very good picture of the Syrian platoon on the right hand hill at all. This is about 600 meters away and although the enemy are out in the open like the Syrians just in front of us, they're harder to spot because actually seeing a human being at 600 meters is quite difficult, especially if that human being doesn't want to be seen like your average pixel trippin. So we've got some things to bear in mind when we're thinking about spotting here. One, just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Two, the longer we observe the more stuff we're going to see. And three, spotting is not equal across units and circumstances. Vehicles are generally easier to spot than infantry, and the further away a target is, the harder it is to spot. There's also a level of variability here. If we restarted this setup, the marines would not spot the same things in the same order. To these three points, we can add that what units are doing influences how easy they are to spot. 
If we give the Syrian platoon on the right orders to run down the hillside, then the Marines notice them straight away, a lot faster than they would have noticed them if they'd stayed still. There's also some dead ground at the bottom of the slope where the Marines can't see them anymore, and because they've lost the solid spot, the red Syrian infantry icons have gone. Instead, there are now a load of grey contact icons where they were last spotted, and these will hang around for a while before starting to fade out. The more opaque a contact icon is, the more certain and recent it is, the more transparent it is, the older it is, and the less sure the spotters are about it. So certain actions make units easier to spot. This also works backwards. At the moment, there's nothing interfering with our Marines spotting, but if they were moving around or getting shot at, they'd clearly not be devoting 100% of their attention to observing. Added into this stew of factors are experience levels. More experienced units will spot better and be harder to spot than less experienced units. Types of terrain. It's obviously harder to spot a unit in a forest than it is to spot them on open desert. Environmental factors like time of day and weather effects. And of course, certain types of equipment. Binoculars, weapon optics, thermal imaging, and night vision devices all improve spotting, sometimes dramatically. So, spotting is very complicated. There's a lot going into the spotting calculations, including, I'm sure, a degree of randomness. But that's not all that's going on here. Remember that each individual pixel trepan is doing this spotting. Not only do they have to identify enemy units, they also have to share this information with each other. This is very easy and very quick inside squads, teams and vehicles. For our two forward observers on this roof, when one of them spots something, he simply tells his buddy about it and there's not a problem. But that just means that our FO team has the information. Behind them, further down the hill, they've left their taxi and LAV 25A2. This has no line of sight to any of the Syrian units that the FOs can see, but because they're in the same formation, the FO team leader has been passing information back to them with his radio. So if we select the LAV, we get a load of grey spotting contacts that correspond to what the forward observers can see. The LAV doesn't have solid spots because it doesn't know 100% where and what these contacts are. But the FOs have given them a good idea. So if we roll the LAV up to the top of the hill to take position next to our FO team, it'll be able to spot the Syrians it has pre-existing information on much faster than it would be able to if it had to look for everything itself. The Ford observers have basically told it where to look and what to expect. Switching to the Syrians' point of view, they still haven't spotted the Marines on the building at this stage, because the FOs are a very small stationary team and they're well concealed up there. But some of them immediately notice the LAV when it drives up, and we can check which units can see it by clicking on its icon. The Syrian units that have a solid spot are lit up, and the Syrian units who either can't see it or just have a contact icon are dimmed. This is very useful for finding out which of your units can see a specific enemy unit. But, it's much harder for the Syrians to share this information amongst themselves than it is for the Marines. This isn't just because the Syrian army operates on a different model to the Americans, but because the infantry I've got here are mechanised infantry who don't carry squad radios and rely on the radios in their BMPs to communicate. So the platoon in dead ground, who can't see the LAV and don't have their vehicles, are completely out of the loop. If we select any of those squads, the LAV disappears. They have no idea that it's there, and because they're out of command and control, nobody can tell them about it. So in addition to the complexities of the actual spotting process, it's also important to consider those command and control links. That's a bit of a different topic, but the quick version is that the more your units can communicate between each other, the faster they'll share out spotting information and, broadly speaking, the better your spotting will be overall. The downside to relative spotting like this is that while it's extremely realistic, it can generate some frustrating situations. Because the player has access to the whole spotting picture and the pixel trip and only have access to fragments, there are inevitably going to be mismatches between what you know is there and what your units can actually see. It's especially agonizing when your troops can't make the spot on a particularly obvious enemy unit, but with the complexity of combat mission spotting system, it's important to bear in mind that the game not only has a lot of variability built in, 
but the pixel trippers are modeled as operating in a very stressful life-threatening environment where even very simple things can become extremely difficult. So that's a quick look at how spotting works. There are a couple of other things to bear in mind. Units generally spot better to their front than they do to the sides and rear, so pointing them in the direction you want to look is a good idea. The noise that units make can be detected, especially at night. This isn't just restricted to engine noise and gunfire, it also involves general night discipline, so lower quality, lower experienced troops are more likely to be talking amongst themselves and, and making noise they shouldn't be at night than higher, more experienced troops are. Finally, not all units, vehicles and equipment are equally good at spotting. Syrian night vision equipment, for example, is inferior to NATO night vision equipment, and the spotting ability of an Abrams tank commander is significantly better than the spotting ability of a Syrian TC in a T-55, for a whole bucket load of reasons. The practical effect of all this is uncertainty. At the start of the battle, neither side usually knows anything about the other. You don't know what the enemy force is made up of, where it is, or what it's doing, and a key component of combat mission gameplay is simultaneously gathering information about the enemy while stopping him from gathering information about you. The golden rule is see without being seen, or spot without being spotted, and there's some balance to this. Smaller teams are harder to spot, but more pixel trippen have more eyes, and therefore more chance of spotting the enemy. Vehicles are big and loud, but can mount much more powerful optics, potentially including thermal images. Stationary units are harder to spot and spot better, but they have to get into a good position to actually be useful. Units that open fire are easier to spot, so if you want your units to stay hidden, it's important to hold fire, and if you want to provoke the enemy to reveal their positions, there's also the option of giving him something to shoot at. At the end of the day, confronted with the empty battlefield, spotting is the keystone to success in combat mission. The more information you can gather, the better an idea you have of where the enemy is and what he's doing, which is half the battle. Once you've got that down, actually deciding what to do to achieve your objectives or have the greatest impact is much easier. Reconnaissance is everybody's job, and there should be a significant portion of your force working at that all the time. That's it for this episode of Basics. Spotting is one of the more unique features of combat missions, so hopefully you all found this one useful. I'll catch you in the next one.